Who cares? Money. So I want to speak about gentlemen, adults, even elders like me. Times are changing. It's not my generation. My generation is that. Somewhere a new generation is that. But it's funny to see that around 40% of accidents of the finger occurs in indoor practice. So it's 60%. So two thirds is on indoor practice. Why? Wow. Why is it happening? The artificial uh, climbing structures are very clever, but they are very, very difficult to adapt. <coughs> you have to adapt even if you practice at home. Since some of you do that. <coughs> it's a business now, and we have a friend's uh, enterprise with the leader on this, this kind of production of uh, what we call structure artificial is guided in French, that's uh, artificial climbing structures. Time are changing and difficulties too. Uh, even if you are not French, you know the French quotation from my one to mine. And something it's funny to see that in the 60s, a period of six, in <coughs> the 70s, the seven, in the 18th, the eight, in the 19th, the nine, and then, and perhaps earlier. So A become A plus. And after 9B plus, you arrive in September 2016 with this little easy way to do 9C. Obviously, tomorrow will be 9D or 10 minutes, something anyway. Oh. So it's like that man is always coming to this summit. Anyway. Uh, that kind of practice in use if you are on an intensive training, that means over true three hours a day, four days a week, you are on an overuse syndrome. It can be obsession. That means that you have the same gesture, that means you have micro traumatic overload. So, you will have pathologies really induced by the spread. <coughs> Around the upper limb, that means 90% of the accident in climbing practice, of course, the, the star is the fully rushes. But you have not to forget that you have some adaptive lesions and you have some very casual inflammatory lesions. Regarding the flexor degenerative sheets, it's an osteofibrous canal with RC from pulleys, five, and three cruciform pulleys. That pulleys leads to admit three kinds of grip the slope grip, the hook grip, and the creep grip. <coughs> it's not a very new thing about this reflection about uh, pulleys. If you look in the encyclopedia of Hebrew, he just say, oh, you have some ligaments who keep the tendon close to the skeleton. It was in 1750. So, the pulley are to maintain rather cuts and lower arm during flexion and extension to keep the distance between flex tendons and the articulation constant. If you take out a pulley or two pulleys, you will have ripped this kind of biomechanics, so the pulley are needed. What is happening about pulleys in different grip? On oak grip, the strains are quite well <coughs> reported on the whole digital canal. The best is certainly the slope grip, where the forces are just 
in equivalent situation and our enemy is a crew. You just said the word before. Why? Because all the strengths will come and really snap on the A2 and A4 pulley. Is there, there is something new about A4 pulley we talk about. And it's so the two main grips are slope and crimp. If you look at the crimp grip, at the slope grip, you have on A4 around 60 newtons strength and A2 8 newtons. If you look at the crimp grip, you have 220 newtons on A4 and 255 on A2. That means 3.6 times on A4 and 32 times on A2. You can understand that A2 will be the dedicated victim. But you can see that the, the strength of A4 is really important too. And it's clear that I don't really know why you have more and more ruptures of A4. You will see it's in contradiction with what we observed to be during many, many years, where it was A2. So, Design and uh, I think that uh, Frank King told you about this really easy thing to understand. Uh, you mixed uh, kinematics, electrogeography, and geometry. Uh, if you use a very never we can correct. Anyway, it's a long, long shot to analyze quite precisely the way it's working biomechanically. Clinically, it's really not very difficult. It's a very standardized uh, topic. Pain, 70 persons, at the proximal phalanx level, usually more lateral than in the middle. You can have a GMAC repetition. Snap noise is quite constant, 75%. You can hear it if you have experience, I know some of you have it. You can hear the snap noise when you are humming and you work your pulley, but your friend downside can hear it too. It's a very big clap. Usually it is A2 and usually it's a fourth finger. In our experience it's 75 percent of this of this uh, way to have the diagnosis. Sometimes you can see the bowstring effect. You just have to have a cream grip and you can see the flex tendon coming through and it's just under the skin. You can imagine that A2 and A4 are pretty red. But it's not as way so obvious. So you have to look for the bowstring. If you want to see it, you have to go to images. Images to find a bowstringing, so you will go to surgery. No bowstringing, you will keep it with a splint. If you have any doubt, imagine is the only way to know it. You can use CT scan, MRI, or ultrasonography. You have a totally ripped pulley. You go to surgery, <coughs> or partial work, you go to splint. CT scan and MRI are exactly the same way to make the diagnosis. The difference is X-ray or not X-ray, the time to have the appointment for the injury, and the price. So it's black and white or white and black. Anyway, you can see the fingers, the flex tendon with A2 and A4, A2 and A4, the same. It's not an encouragement to bring this kind of thing. Easy to do. It's non-invasive. It's low cost. It's ultrasonography. But the man who do it must know what he is looking for. You will find what you are looking for. Don't know. And the very good thing is to do the ultrasonography in a wider bed. 
because you have not to push on the finger. So you avoid to make any constraint on the flexor tendon. So you will have the results quite clear. And if you have uh, two, over two millimeters from the bone at A2 or A4 level, it's a rip. If it's under, it should be not rip. Don't worry about A3, because A3 pulling is going forward and backwards when you move your fingers at the PIP joint. So it's not a good uh, marker. What to do? If the pulley is not rubbed totally, or not rubbed at all, oh, I must say, you can have snap noise and don't find a rubbed pulley. Anyway, a totally rubbed pulley. So snap noise can say you have a partial rubbed And partial rubbed <coughs> won't need a surgical treatment at the fish time. Okay? Uh, in emergency, you do prefection rest, the pride procedure, prefection rest, ice contrition, elevation. You are confronted, or you are in the case where it's the most difficult thing for the surgeon to explain what rest is. Rest is rest. Rest means nothing. <laughs> nothing with a finger. Okay? That's not so easy. If you don't have a rupture today, you can use a totally rupture. You can use a next to the ring with thermoplastic and so on. Okay. One for A2 or a double if you have A2 and A4 really problems. The thing is, you have to explain when you are a surgeon or a therapist, it's not a tiny thing. You have not to climb with you. Oh, no problem. I won't climb with the fourth finger. I will only use the, the three first finger. You can't do it. Or perhaps you're a mutant. Maybe for another planet. When you flex your fingers, you always have co contraction on the fingers, the other fingers. So you can say, we just do like that with the finger, like on my ticket. Okay? So, don't climb with the splint. Oh, no problem. I will climb and I will strap. You won't find a strap which resists 255 newtons strength. Try to find it and you will turn it. So, for us, the strapping is the anxiolytic of the of the climb. Okay? What will you do if you have a double or a simple total rupture of A2 or A4? You will repair. You have a reparative surgery. We used uh, some graft. <coughs> the best graft is using the extensor retinacular. That means something we maintain your extensor at the dorsal aspect of the wrist. It's a same structure, it's fibrous with synovitis, synovial on the good face, you have other graft you can use, but the best is to use the extensor retina. So, you go to surgery. I must confess, the first rupture I made surgically, I made it on one day surgery on local anesthesia. And it was a world war perhaps do not uh, respect totally my uh, rest injunction, but well, that's all. Anyway, you open the finger and you found on the A, supposed to be A2 pulley, nothing. Under the sizes, you have nothing, just just a very paper sheet tissue. It's not a pulley. The pulley is ripped. Okay? Sometimes you don't find anything. Because you have a whiplash and the pulley pass under the flexor tendon. That means you can see the strength, that means that you have a real whiplash and the pulley is under the flexor tendon. And you go and bring it with back. You can't use the rapid pulley. So you have to keep the rim, 
stem on each side of the wrist. <coughs> you pick up your retinaculum at the dorsal aspect of the wrist. You see that? And then you will use it like a graft and you are going to put it and sew it on the fibrous rim of the, the inch and cool. The first side is really easy to do, you sew, but the second side is tricky because you have to make it very <coughs> close to the phalanx. If you want to have your graft put and that the graft put the the flexitinum the closest possible, the closer as possible to the phalanx, you have to flex the fingers when you make the surgery. If you flex the finger, it's a tiny, tiny spot when you have to do the shoot. So you must have somebody who will help you and don't sleep. Okay? At the end, you have repaired the pulley, the fingers a little bit flex of the other fingers, and begin splinting and rehabilitation. It's an integral part of the treatment. Rest, surgery, and splinting. It's a three part you can't avoid. Okay? From day of surgery to day 45, that means six weeks, 45 days, <coughs> one month and a half. And you don't do that like that. If you say one month and a half, ah, oh, it's too much. No, it's 45 days. Oh, okay. So you read it. You have a splint? We'll put the, the rest in a little in a light flexion, the MP joint, MP joint around 80 degrees, and you protect the repair pulley with a splint, a rigid splint. After 45 days, you take the big spring out, but you keep the rings. So one, uh, a symbol if it's A2, a double if it's A2 and A4, and you only start mobilization against resistance after 90 days. <coughs> that means three months. It's long, very long. You have somebody in this room who can tell you very precisely. So, is that the only way to do it? No. I really think that pulley rupture uh, is a very frequent uh, accident that you don't need to repair surgically all the pulley rotor. I really think that under 7B, C, C plus, you have to discuss. Especially with elder. You have people around 50 and 60 who have a 7C or 8 table. If the pulley is rotten, you can listen. Okay? The results we show that in the 2015 thesis. The operated police go back to former level around 80%. Uh, improvements are constant around 40%. A pain, light pain, is very, very frequent after surgery with months and months and months. It's not an awful thing that it's we can say, oh that's <coughs> usually climbers are very satisfied. But surgeon is very serious, so we only satisfy on our own day. <coughs> we don't have a real fail about repair to me. That means that someone who won't climb anymore because he, he can't do it. If he stop, it's not for a physical reason. So what to do to not be on a surgical reversion or have no uh, rupture? Uh, Kathleen told that just before, vibration, you know that, ring, ring, ring. Stretching. It's a good idea before time. The worst thing is you don't warm up. And in Grenoble, it's a very frequent story. 
you just go out of the office, take your little car, go to the parking, and then come in the, in the climbing place and climb without no water, no stretching. It's a very bad day. Try to avoid specific training, it's easy to say. Avoid cream grip, exactly the same, avoid cream grip. <laughs> okay. And tapping, I told you what to think about tapping. It's really, it's theoretic, but if you do it, you can do it to stabilize, not a really um, painful articulation. Or if the, the stern is very stretched, Marche. It's working. You see this lady, she is in the room here. Um, she uh, five rows post up. Not too bad. I'm sorry that she's not uh, 60 years old. Slightly. <laughs> uh, you have the other part of the problem. It, we don't speak a lot about it, but you are more for logical change, adaptive change of the climb, of the climber. Uh, and and uh, we did something with Miss Aguilar many, many years ago, 10 years, years or something like that, ago. Uh, PIP, you have a poster around the program of PIP circumference. Uh, for my own, I think it's the, the scar of a ribbed sprain on the EPP. That's micro spring. Micro spring? That's mean micro scale. But one and one and more and more and more. You will have this carry, PIP jump. If you do your radiograph, you have a corner nautical uh, signaling, some stress devoticals. It's no, no, no problem. Like hyperparatosis <coughs> or some vascular. In fact, the vascular it's a little bit uh, slower than the normal revascularization of the foot, but it's deep, it doesn't induce uh, cold stress or something like that. So it's something you can see, but it's not really a problem. But it exists, you must know it. So, what to conclude? Preventive care. It's the best treatment of wolf. Body pressure too. So, as say uh, Kathleen, you must climb with your feet. <laughs> Easy. You must avoid cream grip, of course, and try to do it like that. If you have a rapid pulling, A2 or A1 of both, if it's totally ruptured, you can repair. You have to repair. If it's not, no. The reparation must be the closest up to the joint of hope. And what will be tomorrow? For us, the problem is no more truly or adaptive care. It's what is going to be, you know this, maybe, what is going to be is calculated in 20 years. I used to say 20 years ago, because I'm an old man, ooh, in 20 years we will have a lot of arthritis with the climber fingers. I didn't say it anymore. So, I don't know. That's what is going to happen. 30 years, 50 years, I will be there. So, I thank you and I want to thank three friends of mine who came today, I guess. Frank, Laura, 